Most modern developed cities follow a set of principles and rules when planning road systems to control traffic flow and keep it manageable. By studying these principles, we can build better road layouts that will help us prevent certain traffic issues simply by planning better and thinking ahead. In the conventional system of road hierarchy, the most important roads are the highways, which are extensive systems that connect multiple cities, regions or even countries. Ideally, there should be direct connections between cities and highways, so that vehicles can arrive and exit the city easily. These connections are made through the second most important road type, the arterials, whose main purpose is to connect the entire city to the highway system. They gather traffic from the different districts and funnel it to the highways. These roads need to be able to handle large volumes of traffic, so they're usually avenues with multiple lanes. There is usually not a lot of services built directly on these roads and intersections are scarce, unless when intersecting other arterials or collector roads, which are the next level of road. Collectors, or distributor roads, serve the local communities. You can consider them the main street of a neighborhood. There's probably one where you live as well and you have to drive through it if you want to go to a different area of town. Speed limits are much slower in collectors than in arterials, and typically, they host local commercial areas and important services like schools and churches. However, in some cases, they can have some residential as well. Finally, we have the local roads, or streets. These are the roads that encompass most residential areas and smaller local shops. They are commonly accompanied by driveways on the side where people park their cars right in front of their houses. That's an easy way to identify them. In addition to these road types, more complex transport systems that involve their own dedicated infrastructure, like trains, metro or trams, are also taken into account, with their stations and access points being located in areas of high traffic and activity, such as arterials or collectors. Of course, most cities do not follow these principles religiously, especially century-old cities, but every city typically has to follow some elements of these principles in order to function. Let's see a practical example of the application of road hierarchy to a city. This is the current city I'm building in City Skylines. It's a peculiar styled city that has a road layout composed of curved roads. Can you still apply the principles of road hierarchy to a city like this? Let's check it out. First we have the highway. This is the only highway connecting the city to the outside world, so it will have to be able to handle an enormous amount of traffic. I will avoid building four-way interchanges to arterials to control traffic, and I will try to build multiple access points along its length so that anywhere in the city there is good highway access. It will be extended and at the very end we will have a downtown with skyscrapers, tall office buildings, and maybe even a harbor or an airport. Then we have the arterials. I prefer not to have a lot of buildings zoned directly on these roads unless I don't plan on extending the roads further. I can extend the arterial past the river and connect it back to the highway somewhere. And I can also continue it past the new industrial district to access the adjacent islands. Collectors here are pretty standard. I have the circular collector that handles all local traffic. In already developed areas, collectors are the roads that lead to the center. I also tried not having a lot of intersections in these roads. In fact, I think we have too many already in the industrial district, and we can probably delete some of them and spread them apart a bit more later if traffic becomes an issue. Then, of course, there's the local roads, which are clearly visible on the Emerald and industrial districts, but are yet to be developed on the newer areas. Finally, we plan the rail system. There will be train stations in both the new industrial and residential districts, and this system will be extended to the downtown area, and can even be split to access a nearby island. If you want to follow the development of this city, you can watch a Let's Play series here. If you want more city building tips and learn how to plan and start a new city, watch this video. Hope this video has been helpful, take care and have fun!